Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes. I teach, I'm a math teacher here at West Chicago Community High School. And a number of us here have done presentations on um, the building thinking classrooms model. And I wanted to kind of share some of the stuff that we do here in terms of how I build these out um, and then some of the modifications we've done. And hopefully you'll find it helpful in terms of take, shifting some of your lessons from the um, standard teacher led model to a student led model. So um, a couple of things. The first of all, this is my old lesson. Um, this is a lesson that I've used for a long time to introduce rational exponents. There's a standard warm up. Um, we go off and we start having discussion about what negative exponents mean. Kids do a review and a lot of this obviously is teacher led. Um, either we go through it or have kids come up through here and then we'll talk about it. I'll give definitions and stuff like that. And then we just run a bunch of examples. And one of those things that I figured is that um, many of the lessons that I, at least the way I built, and this, by the way, is going to be kind of geared for an honors algebra two class, is the way Katie and I set this up, um, is kind of a building on prior knowledge. I'm very big in terms of saying this is what we did. What's the next step? And that's kind of one of the things that you do in a building thinking classroom when the kids are up at their non-permanent vertical surfaces. So. Um, this step wasn't that big of a deal to um, make, but I'm going to show you a couple of tweaks that we did. So, um, first of all, over here, um, I've already broken the kids up into groups. They're at the boards, and we're giving them something small and simple so that they can obviously build some trust with each other since they may not know everybody even at this point. I had a kid yesterday who was like, I don't know anybody in my group. Um, and so then from there, I have them talk through, and again, notice that's the same thing that we had here before. And then over here, again, having them do some simplifying um, to go through. And so again, they're reviewing all that prior knowledge that they had from Algebra 1. The way we've resequenced this, this is the first time we've talked about exponents in any meaningful way this year. Um, we go through, at least in our curriculum, we go through and do all the simplifying expressions first, then we go through solving all the equations, and then we go through and do all the graphing last in the th um, third big idea unit. This right here is something that Katie came up with. Um, now, speaking of which, I tend to do a lot of projection on the main smart board. Students do the work. Somebody will read it to, you know, one of the persons in the group will read or, um, or copy it down on the board and go from that. Katie prefers to a lot of times give um, all the problems up on the board so the kids don't have to go back and forth with that. I, I'm torn on that. Um, but as you can see, she kind of stops at every slide. And then she goes around and has the kids have to have her initial the different areas and that kind of allows for a little bit more autonomy so the classes don't work um, don't have to be so lockstep with one another um, there's some pluses to that um, the downside is that if you have to talk to the whole group about something like i ended up having to do with this lesson yesterday sometimes it's easier if everybody's on the same page but anyway that is one option as well so anyway, then we move into this, and this is something new that we didn't have in the original um, lesson, and it starts to kind of get them thinking about how radicals work, which we did the day before, and then we start moving it into exponents, which they just practiced. And we're trying to make that bridge between the two, and this is going to be one of those places where you're going to have to walk around and ask some really good pointed questions of your students. Um, because a lot of these, I saw a lot of zeros and ones to a negative one, and they didn't quite get that. And I need to rethink some of this questioning up here. But, you know, how do we take this first equation that, you know, these two are equal, these two have to be equal. So, um, but once you get that one, then the third, the uh, fourth one comes in, this fourth question where you've got the cube roots, the, the one third powers will come through, it comes through very, very nice. Once that starts, again, now we're going to do a small step. The small step is this, and again, this was what we had in the original one, is that now that you understand that fractional or rational exponents are really roots, then what will end up happening is then you can go ahead and just have them do something that's kind of safe and playing with, because they really see 49 to the one-half power is 7. Um, you have a chance here. We built in some stuff to reinforce about when power or negatives are used. But again, it's a small step that they can pretty much do on their own. And then from there, this step took a little bit more time. Um, and we did this. Um, so again, now they had to figure out, okay, how's the three fourths? And I ended up actually typing in um, something to the extent of, um, best way to write this, where I said, okay, for a hint, I said something like three fourths is equal to 
3 times 1 fourth. And I think I also said it then also as 1 fourth times 3. And just kind of giving that so they can start breaking it up. And that helped a little bit. It was at this point where I think we had been working on this for maybe 30 minutes. And I was seeing that everybody was kind of starting to get lost. Even though I was going around and asking questions and doing everything where, you know, saying, hey, group three, you're doing this well, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that was at this point there, and then I stepped back and I actually went through and instead of going on to this next slide, um, we actually went on and I came up with a new slide where we just kind of went through and defined the different parts and how this related to um, your rational exponent. And I did some good questioning there in terms of trying to draw some of that out from the kids, but I had the feeling that for whatever reason, my students' um, exponential and root skills didn't seem as strong as I've had in years past. And so because of that, one of the things that I ended up doing was just I decided, okay, let's go ahead and pull it back. And so I had to regroup a little bit more than I originally planned. Um, now, in terms of taking notes, because that's always the question of how to do that, the one thing that we did for a long time prior to doing building the thinking classrooms in a lot of our classes is this here of uh, learning cards. A friend of ours had picked this up at a, an AP conference for AP stats. Um, and I took it over to Algebra 1. Some people took it into Algebra 2. And this is one of those things that's very helpful for students. Sometimes I have the students fill them out on their own, so it's a little bit more guided. It's not quite as open-ended as some of the stuff that is in the book, um, but that's one of the things that we're going to try to move towards. But then this is a helpful place, and we have them. This is, you can see the learning cards thing later. Um, I've got a link to it down below. Um, but that hopefully will then give them some sort of concrete examples to use for things such as learning checks and stuff like that. And we're pretty aggressive in the honors curriculum of going straight from this into our um, formative assessments like this um, so that they can go through and figure out, okay, where are they at? Um, and then Katie and I can see where they're at too. So then we kind of have an idea of A, where the class is at, but then also for where the students are um, the students can see where they're individually at and then get ready for the big assessment in this case we think our bigger assessments in about a week and a half um, we'll be happy with that so anyway um i hope that was helpful so again that was just a way that i took a regular lesson um from prior to building thinking classrooms into building thinking classrooms um Again, it doesn't have to be a hard thing. All the problems that you saw were all stuff that I did before. It's just a matter of putting it in a format, having the kids up to the board, not writing down notes, just working on the problems and asking questions and engaging with them individually and with the groups. And for the most part, you know, I think you, know, you can have a lot more individual conversations that way. So hopefully that'll help you do some of the same types of things. Um, and again, all those resources, I've linked the resource that um, we put in the um, conference presentation down below. So there's lists there from Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. Um, feel free to check those out. I mean, if you have any questions, please go ahead and let us know or comment down below. And obviously, as the kids say, like, subscribe, and comment, put the little bell on. Thanks.